Moment of truth, let's do it. Last video you guys saw, me and Gingy Moto, we went ahead and disassembled the thing. We took off like the charger door. Panel in front of it is not damaged. Oh, there's water in there. <laughs> I told you that. And all the stuff that we needed to get to like the dent. The dent was the one thing that I wasn't sure I could probably do. So I went ahead and made some calls and I did find somebody, Caesar Dents, uh, in Clovis, that guy took my car and he quoted me like 460 something dollars for the dent pole. So I'm gonna give him $600. It took him a little while, but he just finished. So I'm gonna ride a e-scooter over there and we'll go drive the Tesla home. So let's uh, grab a scooter and head that way, head that general direction. Right, check it out. Check that out, boys. <laughs> She's ready to drive home, so let's get in here and drive it home. First time ever driving a Tesla. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be a great time. It's gonna be so much fun. All right. I think because I don't have a dash cam, I'm probably just gonna roll this the entire way home. <laughs> I have no idea what's gonna happen on this ride, but. We'll take it nice and slow. We'll take it very nice and slow. Looks like the taillight and everything he installed again for the drive home, which I highly appreciate. Um, looks like it all lines up perfect and really it's just gonna be body work and paint, like super light body work and paint to finish this thing up. So I'm very excited. I wanna test out the power right now, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna make sure this thing is road worthy. Regen is aggressive in this thing, dang. The turn signals, you just click up one time and it stays on until you actually turn. How about that? I like the feel of it. Overall, I like the feel of it so far. Nice, it's pretty quick. I mean, I say that knowing this is this is only a single motor, well, base model, Tesla Model 3, but still. The bumper used to look a lot worse because there was rubber from the tire that rubbed against it. What remains here is actually just burning through the paint. So I'm probably gonna have to do a little bit of body filler on the bumper as well. I'll sand it down, see if there's really low spots and if there are, I'll fill those. Anyway, right now let's get started on the body work and just get this thing knocked out. Hey, just wanted to pop in really quick to encourage you guys a little bit. I hope this video has been freaking epic so far. I'm currently doing this sick voiceover for you guys at 2 a.m. because that's when I get time to edit these videos. <laughs> but right now, I just want to add a section of real life and what I do behind the scenes a bit. What you're witnessing right here is what takes most of my day when I'm not working on videos for you guys. So what I'm doing here is I am on a call with a couple that we're doing photography and videography for their wedding. Besides creating videos for you guys here, I also run a small local photography and video production studio. And right now is peak wedding season. So I highly appreciate your patience on these videos. My heart truly is with you guys in the garage, but my daily responsibilities spread me a little bit thin sometimes. So time is hard to come by right now in wedding season. We're doing like three to four weddings a weekend since March and until about June, it's gonna be winding down soon. So I'm really excited about that. So in the meantime, you guys know how it goes. I'm slapping out some e-bike videos since I can do those pretty quickly and they're paying the bills between build videos. So, but I have a whole lot 
lot more coming. I have the full Lamborghini gold wrap video coming. I cannot wait to show you guys that. Kurt also has finished disassembling the electric go-kart, so we're doing the body kit with it right now, and I'm gonna be painting that thing soon. And then we freaking troll K1 Speed on their own track. So lots of cool things come in, but right now I'm gonna be hitting up a million e-bike videos back to back. I have like seven or something in the queue right now. So I appreciate you guys sticking around through the e-bike videos during the season. We'll be back to our current builds soon. Anyway, all that to say, you know, we see all these people on YouTube with epic, you know, montages and editing their videos to make life look as epic as possible. But I see you guys hustling out there and sometimes I feel exhausted and you know, I don't really want to do what I have to do, <laughs> but I get so genuinely excited when I upload a new video just to see all you guys commenting. So thank you all for the support. It really does mean the world to me. Sometimes you just need to take a deep breath, you know, count to three, <laughs> and just remember that every day is a gift. Life is, is truly good, even when it doesn't feel like it. There's something to be thankful for. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day so far, wherever you're at. I love you guys, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Naturally, right when I'm about to paint, I did not realize. If you look closely, look, there's like a little, uh, like a curve. <sighs> Just got done sanding and prepping this thing for paint. So it's back to the body filler once again. <laughs> no one would ever know that there was not a body line thing there if I just painted it as it was, because it looks good, it looks totally fine. Body curve, everything is exactly as it needs to be, besides the freaking line. <laughs> but anyway, I am on a mission to do this right, so it's like midnight right now. <laughs> I was not wanting to do more body work, I was just about to paint this thing, but man. Here goes another two hours. <laughs> All right, status update. This is ready for paint. I went ahead and sanded that down to like 1500 grit. Should should be just fine. Um, but before I went ahead and painted, to make it easier on myself, I went ahead and also um, used some epoxy to reseat this down. The only damage on this entire bumper was obviously repaint of the bumper. I did, I used some extra Bondo just to f fill some of like the low spots, but there really weren't many low spots at all. I mean, it was really just, it basically just rubbed the paint away, but the structure was completely fine. Besides these tabs, this whole piece is just one long plastic piece that's just kind of like um, plastic welded to it. And those are the clips for the bumper to clip it onto the car. The only damage on it was this section from here up was disconnected. It kind of just popped off the little weld, the little plastic weld kind of just popped off. Um, so I just pushed it back down and then I used a little bit of hot glue just to hold it in place on the back side. Front side I did epoxy, like plastic epoxy that should hold just, you know, as strong as before. Crazy how minimal damage there was really on this car. It was really just the dent pole and bodywork on that section and then just repainting the bumper basically. I did. So anyway, that's what I did. Let's get back to painting.
the dent shop just put everything in the trunk since he said that I'd be needing to take the bumper off anyway and there's no reason to install all of it again uh, anyway there's a couple more pieces in here what I'm looking for is this little bracket I think it should have one on that side too I would assume there are screw holes right there so I'm trying to find that piece right now and I'm just in the process of putting this thing back together so I'm probably just gonna roll the time lapse just get this thing back together. It was about time I got a Tesla on this channel, man. This thing is, channel's all about electric builds and whatnot, and I've never had an electric car. Oh, well, be besides a Leaf. I don't think that counts, though. The Nissan Leaf, it was an electric car, but 100 horsepower in like 32 mile range. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't justify that as an actual modern electric vehicle. Anyway, repair is coming along. I'm, I'm starting to understand this is just a one-man DIY personal project for myself. <laughs> this is not, this is not something I would give back to a customer if I were to be doing it for a customer. <laughs> the quality probably is not quite there, but if you look from a distance, if you look from like 50 or 60 feet away, I think it would probably be passable. So that's all I'm going for here is, you know, super, super far in the distance. Everyone thinks this is a nice Tesla. So, <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be fun. I'm enjoying this project. It's actually, it's a lot easier than I'm making it out to seem. Besides the paint job, I, you know, I'm happy with it. I mean, the color match was okay, but if you freaking zoom in there, you punch in where there was a tape line, you can see it's not perfect. I feel like it was probably just because the paint was not the correct temperature, I don't know. Well, it's ruined now, might as well just keep on going. <laughs> but the bumper paint laid down real nice. The repair came out fine, but I'm realizing that I need to just do some more body work. The paint match didn't come out perfect anyway. The only way to really line up this bumper correctly is to actually extend this panel down a little bit to meet it. Anyway, that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing. The shop didn't, I mean, he did a good like eyeball job, <laughs> but obviously it's not lined up perfectly. You know, just the repair that he shaped and all the, and all the holes that the brackets go into and stuff, it kind of didn't line up perfectly. So anyway, all that to say, I need to, at some point, just add some more, probably just body filler and fill in that gap just a little bit and just meet the panels up a little better. But anyway, all that to say, the repair is finished enough to where I'm gonna go get the brake and lamp inspection right now. And if you guys don't know, how to get salvage cars re-registered, like once they get claimed by insurance, basically the plates are taken, registration's taken away, whatever. You buy it from the auction, you fix it up, and then you have to get the plates and registration back. <laughs> and to do that, because it was a damaged vehicle, um, you have to go get a brake and lamp inspection and a smog check if it's a gasoline car. I think you just need a brake and lamp inspection for this since it's electric, but that's something I'll be figuring out soon today. But you need to get those two certificates, a smog certificate where it passes, and then the brake and lamp inspection where they check the brake pads, make sure there's enough brake life on them, and the brake lights, turn signals, headlights work. That's pretty much all you need. So once you get those, you have to go to the DMV, wait in line for like seven hours, and then, um, and then wait your turn to pay like $700 of fees to get registration and plates for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely anticipating this to be about 700 at least for all this stuff today. So anyway, that's what I'm doing right now, getting the brake and lamp inspection done, but I didn't actually physically see all the lamps working, so let me just record it and then I'll check to make sure they're all working. It looks like somebody didn't plug in the tail light after they installed it. <laughs> and that should probably do it.
official drive. Let's do it. So far, so good. Definitely enjoying the car, but it's <laughs> It's definitely not the S class, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, well, I made it back home after visiting four different smog and brake and lamp adjustment shops. First shop I went to said they're waiting for their license renewal, so they're not doing brake and lamp adjustments at this time, but once that renews, they will. Second shop I went to that did the S class last time said they'd never done a Tesla and I think they, you know, they thought it required specialty tools to adjust the headlights and whatnot, so they probably won't take it. Uh, but they recommended another shop down the street and I went over there and they also said they don't work on Teslas. <laughs> and so I went, and so they recommended another shop that's closer to me that they said works on Teslas. And I went over there and he had to check with his manager and they said they don't see why that would be a problem to, to do a Tesla. So, so we have an appointment set for next Tuesday. So if all goes according to plan, this thing will be registered and on the street, hopefully on Tuesday. But the repair is basically finished. I do need to figure out just a little bit of the panel gap here, but overall it came out fine. And honestly, if you were, you know, just standing about About here, right about here. You can't really tell, no one would even know. And this was my first time doing something like this, really, where I had a shop had to pull out a big dent. It wasn't an easy swap, just you know, a panel for a panel and then put it all back together. It was a dent repair and the shop didn't line it up perfectly right there. And when I was doing body work, I didn't even think to put the bumper on before I actually painted it. My mistake, learned something from it. That's all that I really care about. I can always just re do it later and better next time if I really want to. But as far as the repair goes on the Tesla, I'm satisfied with it as it is. I can at least drive it around and it looks presentable enough to where people aren't gonna be laughing at me the whole time while I drive it around. This whole thing really is just a bragging right anyway. So <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. But I might just have to pimp this thing out a little bit next time. Uh, the repair is done so I can just move on with you know, stylizing the car and building something cool out of it, hopefully. So currently I'm considering some 20 inch rims or so. Apparently 20 inch rims is the biggest you can put on a Tesla 3 without it really rubbing and clearance issues like crazy. And I did get a lowering kit sent to me actually, but I don't even know if I'll bother with doing that. I feel like a lowering kit would go really well with the stock rims. If we slap some bigger wheels on there that would fill the wheel wells better anyway, I feel like a lowering kit wouldn't really be necessary for that. It's kind of one of those cars where you don't really want it since it's a daily commuter you don't really want to have super low you know ground clearance so you're scraping on every little thing especially it being a tesla with a big fat battery pack underneath it so maybe we get some new wheels and maybe i'm thinking wrapping this thing either matte or satin black i don't really know what would look good but at the same time i also don't want to be so generic because i've seen those you know i've seen the matte black teslas out and about and while it looks super cool i don't know i feel like i should just do something a little bit more out of the ordinary not something like that i don't know we'll have to figure something out so anyway you guys let me know what you would want to see done with this build i know it's not a super crazy build but i did get it for a steal anyway that being said guys thank you for watching i think it turned out all right let me know what you guys think down below you guys have yourselves a fantastic day i'll catch you next time thank you for watching